Today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. NordVPN provides over 5,000 super fast servers across 60 different countries to help you to hide your IP, location and internet activity, whether you're at home or in a public place like a coffee shop or airport. Simply click on the country you'd like to connect to. There are also a range of specialised servers for peer-to-peer, -peer, there's a dedicated IP option and double VPN for when you want to be one step closer to being behind 7 proxies. There's also a kill switch option if you wanted to cut off your internet should the VPN stop for whatever reason. NordVPN also works in China and with Netflix. You can have up to 6 simultaneous connections at once and it comes with 24 hour customer support. NordVPN stores no data logs. At the moment they're 70% off, making it just $3.49 a month, plus you get an additional free month by using the link in the video's description. A Counter-Strike map is almost always bigger than it really is. The world doesn't just stop suddenly when you reach the end of an explorable area, it stretches on to give the impression that it isn't just a kill zone, that it is indeed an actual place. This didn't used to be the case with games, particularly 3D ones. Graphics didn't come cheap and there was little need to add even more for your poor computer to process than what was needed for the level to be playable, but as time went on, computers got more powerful and the games more elaborate. I consider myself lucky to have seen this happen, that wonderful intro to Half-Life 1, none of which was needed at all, or how about Operation Flashpoint? To jump from corridor shooters to a completely open island that could be explored with dozens of different vehicles was perhaps the greatest leap in freedom I will ever experience. A lot of the time this freedom is less about doing it and more about just feeling that you could if you wanted to. Like yeah, this big battle's all well and good, but wouldn't it be cool to, say, explore that forest over there instead? Well this is great, but now I want to visit the seaside. Operation Flashpoint, you disappoint me. If anything, Counter-Strike is perhaps one of the most limited modern games that you could play for these kinds of details, but that hasn't stopped the mappers from bothering to flesh out the levels we'll no doubt play countless times. A lot of these details are noticed and appreciated, like that beautiful view over at T-Spawn on Inferno, but I think many spots go completely ignored simply because players are too busy focusing on the gameplay. Take Palace on Mirage, probably a place you've run through hundreds of times before. But have you ever noticed this elaborate balcony area? This hasn't just been added. It's been here for years but most gamers don't notice because they're too busy checking on where enemies will be coming from. There's also a nice little balcony here with a table and two chairs, an ideal place to watch the action from. Oh and Valve? Please fix. Apartments is another place, it's not as claustrophobic as you might think. There's a big outdoor area opposite the kitchen, can't say I've ever stopped to appreciate this while rushing B, but I can't speak for everybody. Maybe you have stopped to appreciate these spots before, maybe you're the person who likes to rush B last. You may have peered into the carpet shop and tunnel, or spotted this unreachable balcony that, were it not clipped off, would let you see Palace and Mid at the same time, the Left 4 Dead level near Bombsite B of Inferno, and a place straight out of Militia hidden behind a wall at CT Spawn. Dust 2's long A leads to a road that comes out near T Spawn, the nightclub in Overpass, and so on. There are plenty of places like this that may blow your mind if you consider yourself familiar with that level, yet haven't noticed them before. I guess if we're going to talk about areas beyond the playable space, skyboxes need to be mentioned. They shouldn't be a mystery to most of you because I talk about them every opportunity I'm given, but if you go into noclip mode and fly into the void then you may have encountered these miniature levels. This is the skybox, it contains things and details that are too big to fit into the real level for whatever reason, so instead it's projected around it like some kind of illusion. The best one to explore has to be the one on Vertigo. It's the entire city. Do this and you can fully appreciate the details that have gone into making it. At ground level it's like something out of Midtown Madness 2. There are monuments, hundreds of vehicles and a generous helping of police cars too. But its limitations are soon apparent. It's only intended to be viewed from where you are in the real level, so most things have an invisible side to them to help to optimise the map. You may think that CSGO being a competitive game would mean the removal of all these irrelevant spots in the name of framerate optimization, but because it's competitive there's a lot of spectating going on and this will often require perspectives above the action, and as a result there is a need to texture these otherwise unseen surfaces around the levels. It's a double edged sword, it means there are more interesting places in the levels but you're unable to visit any of them. 
I won't linger on these kinds of details in case you've already seen them all, but I urge you to boot up a level occasionally just to take a look around. Go the wrong way as a terrorist on Nuke, and you'll even be told the story of how you broke into this place. Plus, this whole car park is part of the real level, instead of being hidden away in the skybox somewhere. The other maps also tell little stories to flesh out the action. On train, the terrorists got into the train yard by slamming through these gates. On overpass, maybe they couldn't get the run up to the gates to burst through them, so instead just climbed over them with these ladders. And on cobble, they crawled under the worst designed portcullis in the world. There are so many nice little touches to these levels. It's no surprise when you think that these maps have had thousands of hours invested into making them. No wonder they had time to hide these fun little details. But sadly, it being a competitive game, there's very little that you can do with them in Global Offensive. Maps are heavily tested. People run about with clip brushes visible to help them to find spots that they might be able to exploit, or simply to discover new places to lose the bomb. I recently covered the science that went into discovering new pixel jumps, but this has been a relatively recent trend. Even maps as new as 2015 or 16 still show a roughness to them, and the further you go back, the better it gets. For fun, I recommend booting up the previous game in the series, Counter-Strike Source. I get the feeling it wasn't quite as competitively tuned as Global Offensive's maps are, and there are often hidden treats waiting for curious gamers to discover. Near the CT spawn of Piranesi was this building. There's no way into it from the level itself, but go into Noclip and you'll find a primitive giraffe statue in there. Why? Who knows? Maybe it's just an easter egg surprise. But a welcome one, to be sure. Near the CT spawn of Assault is another one. No clip through the ground and you'll come to this little boxed off room with a shoe in it and not a lot else. That's it. Attack the shoe and it will disappear. What does this mean? Is there deeper meaning to it? Why Valve? Why? I'd occasionally make something similar for my maps if I wanted to give an overly reflective surface a less reflective environment. But it wasn't used like that here. It's just a room with a shoe in. Maybe it was done in the hope that in 15 years time it would be noticed and speculated about, becoming one of life's great mysteries. I enjoyed Assault for the freedom it offered. If you had the time then you could jump around each post of this fence up here to the roof of the next building along. You could run all the way along that and down into the walkway here. Here was a ladder you could climb. You could run around the side of this building. With enough people I reckon you could have gone all the way around to CT spawn. You could jump onto the bin here, then onto the sign, then up onto the roof an excellent spot to camp out the hostage rescue zone from. In fact, turning on the clip brushes reveals dozens of spots that would quickly be patched if they were in CSGO today. My goodness, you and your friends could spend hours discovering valuable trick spots on maps such as these to exploit in the next clan match you were to play. I thought I had outgrown this, but discovering new spots when making this video made me realise how much I miss the playful elements that Counter-Strike Source allowed for. Italy had this bit here. It had to be done intentionally. If the terrorists rushed this bit fast enough, they could boost somebody up here and take the entire enemy team by surprise. It felt so good. And just a bit further along, you could jump onto the door, then onto the window, then finally onto the balcony up here for a powerful, if exposed, crow's nest. Even Dust 2 had its problems. There was a hole in Long A, way too high to manage with a standard boost, but launch a player up there by lobbing a grenade at his butt and he'd go flying over the top of the map. This was such a huge exploit that it was eventually patched. I see there's still a gap at short A, but it's just a bit too narrow for players to squeeze through. Maps such as these are remnants of an era that I don't think Counter-Strike can ever return to. I admit I'm sad about that. I remember when playing competitively was just a small part of Counter-Strike to me. I remember late nights on custom maps with friends, or trying to exploit an old favourite level with the aid of a few schoolmates, or seeing a 20-man tower on the T-side servers. And I don't want gamers these days to miss out on it. I've uploaded a non-clipped version of Mirage for you to explore to your heart's content. And then there's Disparity Infinity, a level that I deliberately made larger than it needed to be, and filled with pointless spots and places to discover. Have fun. Again, this video is sponsored by NordVPN, which you can get for a discount and with a free month by using the link and code provided in this video's description.